Are you ready to elevate your fashion game in Clo 3D by adding great looking hems? Well, today that's what we're going to talk about. Hi, I'm Christina and I love to digitally apparel pattern creating unique pieces of wearable art. And I am super excited today to kind of be diving into Clo 3D. I got this question a little while ago on how I like to do my hems. And there's a couple different ways that I like to do it. So let's go ahead and bring up my screen of Clo 3D. I have this dress that I have been working on through my work that we're just going to do. We're going to add the hem in a couple of different ways. So the first thing right now, I just have the hem how I would actually want it. I don't have any extra on there, like if I was to actually fold it up or anything like that. The quickest and fastest way I always find to do a hem is not actually how you would pattern a hem for a real pattern, but it's a great way to pattern it for digital. And that is to just make a facing on the inside. Sometimes if you have a dress that it, you're wanting to hem it as long as possible, you will add like a bias to fold up and in and stitch in. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing. Although if you are patterning something from scratch and you know how long of a hem you want, that's not the ideal way to go. So we're going to, we're going to pattern this little, um, fold up little piece. So we're going to first add an interior line. We're going to go one inch and we're going to, I am on textured service. So if we take my avatar away, you can see it's darker there on the inside. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trace this pattern. Trace as a pattern right there. Then we're going to symmetric pattern with sewing. And you want to sew it uh, in. So we're going to sew. You want to go right side to right side though, or wrong side to wrong side. So technically I need to flip these. Technically this guy needs to go over here like that. Then these guys can still go together and the side seams will go to the front. We're going to be doing the front a little bit differently so you can see the other way. And then before I actually simulate, because right now it's kind of a jumbled mess and it's going to cause problems, we're going to highlight and find out where it is. And then we're going to do a super impose under. You can see it pops in right there. Super impose under. Oh, and it kind of left some. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight both of them at the same time and do a super impose under. And then as you can see, I have that hem already kind of in there and that's folded up. Now, if I was to pass this off to somebody, I would definitely duplicate this fabric or something, mark it as digital hem only. And then I would actually go in and add seam allowance for this hem at the length that I was wanting to. That way it doesn't get confusing to somebody else of like, why do I have these weird hemming pieces when you want me to do a hem a different way? So that's one way you can always label the fabric pieces digital only and then add in the hem that way. So that is the first way. I'm going to go ahead and simulate that really fast. As you can see, it has a nice little crisp edge and it looks like a very nice little hem. You can go in and you can add your top stitching and everything to really make it look nice. The other way that you can do a hem is actually using that fold tool. So we're going to start by First, we're going to extend our pattern down. Um, so we're going to offset pattern outline. We're going to do one inch down. We're going to hit OK. And it moves it one inch down for me. But I want to make sure I also go then and set as an internal line up one inch. But I actually want two of them because I need this fold line here. And then I need the line I'm going to sew to. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK like that. 
and you can see it has extended our front. Now we want to fold it up. Um, well, I'm going to sew it first. So I'm going to do the same type of sewing. We're just going to sew from there to there. And because I am sewing to a internal line, it's automatically going to turn it and press it. The line I'm going to have to worry about is this center line. So if I highlight the center line, come over here to the fold tool, click on that line. I can then twist that up as far as I can get it without it going actually through the pattern. I went, I got a little bit through over there, so we're just going to pull that down just a hair's breadth. And then we're going to hit simulate really fast. And you're going to see it does it, but it kind of looks a little like bulgy, a little plumpy. Uh, and that's because we haven't actually fully turned it. It has a little bit of thickness to it. So what you can do is you can highlight that with the fold angle tool again. You can bring the fold angle all the way down to zero and re-simulate. And that will help a little bit. It kind of kind of evens it out a little bit, kind of helps pull it, but there's still a little wonkiness going. If you also then click this fold rendering on, I find that's when it actually kind of helps it really crisp up and make it look like a uh, an actual folded up hem. Uh, so those are those, those are the main two ways I really like to use the hemming in Clo 3D is either remake those facings, which I think always kind of makes it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more like you would want it or how it would be seen in real life, even though that's not how you'd actually want your pattern to look. So doing it the second way where we extend it definitely helps make it look more like how the pattern's going to look, but there's some other little kind of digital twerks and quirks you're going to have to work with to fully make it look good. But those are the main two ways I really like to render, or I really like to hem my rendered clothes in Clo 3D. I would love to know uh, in the comments below how you like to render your Clo 3D garments. And if there's a way I haven't seen, I would love to know it so I can give it a test out. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so you can continue to see fun ways to digitally pattern draft some fun pieces of wearable art, as well as some tips and tricks, and of course those sewing tool reviews. I look forward to seeing you in some of my other videos. Happy patterning!